in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started with embroidery. Hello and welcome. I'm Rebecca at Sew Pomona, where I design embroidery patterns for the home sewist and crafter. But before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell below so you never miss a single upload. So how do you get started with embroidery? First things first, you're going to need a few supplies. Let's start with notions. You're going to need some embroidery scissors, possibly a thimble, especially if you're working with more heavyweight fabrics like denim or twill, a tape measure or a ruler. I like the clear ones, especially for lining up your pattern designs. And you'll probably want a seam ripper for ripping out those stitches that you messed up. Next comes floss. There are many different weights and styles of floss. There's stranded cotton, It's probably the kind of floss you're used to seeing in the store. There's cruel wool. There's pearl cotton, like these. You can get vintage floss, silk, metallics, and much, much more. My favorite is the pearl cotton. It has a nice weight and a bit of a sheen to it. And if like me, you use all the strands when you're stitching your embroidery, it gives a nice dense stitch. And don't forget needles. Remember, a larger number equals a finer needle. Chenille needles have a sharp point, whereas tapestry needles have a blunt point. You can use embroidery and cruel needles for finer stitches, that would be about a one to a 10. For pearl cotton, I suggest chenille about 18 to 24 or tapestry 22 to 26. These needles have a larger eye, which makes it easier to thread a thicker strand of floss. And last but never least, fabric, my favorite thing. As a seamstress, I have quite a stash. So I'm gonna show you a few different kinds of fabrics today. You can of course use different kinds of quilting cottons, printed cottons. Especially you can also um, stitch onto a pattern on a printed fabric. This is a cotton twill, has a little bit more heft than the quilting cotton, gives you a nice sturdy stitch. There's all kinds of weaves. Um, this one I've hand dyed with indigo, linen, great for stitching embroidery. It's very easy to see the weave in this fabric, which makes it easy to get nice even stitches. Silk, cotton voile. You might want to back this with something so that it's not see-through. Wool, and one of my favorites for embroidery, denim. It's nice and hefty and gives you a really great stitch result because your stitches will stay very tight. I tend to focus on fashion fabrics because I embroider to clothing, but you can use anything. The sky's the limit. Before you start your project, be sure to wash and dry your fabric first. You don't wanna deal with shrinkage before you've started this project. And make sure to press. You may also want to finish your edges you can use pinking shears, a zigzag stitch on a sewing machine, or a serger. After you've finished your design, you can interface it or use a lining to protect your stitches. Now we're going to separate our floss. First, pull your label up to the center. Divide the bottom section into two loops. Find the centers and cut. You can trim off the little section at the end. Now hold lightly at the top and pull out one strand. This will be 19 inches long. You're going to take your floss, remove the labels, and separate it out into a large loop. Find the knot that will hold them together, trim it, and now cut through your lengths. 
you will have 38 inches. Next up is hoops. Hoops come in a variety of sizes, from a small three inch to 10 to 13 inch, to different shapes. I prefer about a six to eight inch hoop for medium projects, like if you're doing a pocket or a hoop, regular hoop design. A smaller hoop is really great if you're working on detail work, like cuffs or collars. You can use, also use stretcher or scroll frames for larger projects. I like to stabilize my frames with twill tape before I start my projects to keep them, the fabric from slipping and to protect my delicate fabrics. Here's a little demo on how I do that. Grab your hoop, unscrew, and separate the two hoops, the inner from the outer. We're going to wrap the outer in twill tape. Grab your twill tape, we're just going to fold over this edge to start our wrapping. Keep your twill taut as you go around the loop. And now we'll speed up so you can see the whole process beginning to end. And now we've come to the end. You're going to trim your twill tape, fold it under, and then you can grab a needle and thread and sew that edge shut. You can also go back and sew the beginning as well if you feel it needs it. Now put your screw back on and you can insert it back together. Now let's talk about getting your design onto your fabric. First, you're going to need some marking pens and pencils. You can use washable, chalk pencils or pens, transfer pencils. Now let's talk about examples of transfer methods. You can use a light box or a bright window by holding your design up to it. You can use carbon or graphite paper. This you would just place under your design and then trace through to your fabric. There's dressmaker's paper. This is more of a chalk paper, so it's the same thing. You're going to put this under your design and then you're going to draw on top to trace it through and it will leave a blue mark with this or a yellow and it also comes in white. I find that particularly nice on dark fabrics to trace through. You can also get different printer papers that will transfer through. I've done this one in reverse so that I can place it ink side down on my fabric, iron it, and it's good to go. This is a similar kind of paper. This is Aunt Martha's tracing paper. You Take the tracing paper, first you reverse your embroidery, it's going to mirror your image, and you use a special pencil to draw your design on, you trace it, then you place it down on top of your fabric, iron it, and it will leave the design right side up. Finally, let's get that fabric hooped. Unscrew your screw and remove the inner hoop. Screw it back together. Now we're going to take the inner hoop and place it underneath your fabric. The outer hoop goes on top. Press gently and pull lightly from behind to keep your fabric taut. Tighten your screw and you're all set. Next up, starting and stopping. We're going to start with a waist knot. 
hoop your fabric, and get a needle ready. After you thread your needle, we're going to go into the hoop from the front. Tie a knot at the bottom. This is our waist knot. Now we're going to go in from behind and we're going to stitch a few inches away from where we put the waist knot. I'm showing a simple back stitch here. After you finish stitching, you're going to pull your thread to the back and then you can weave in your ends through a few stitches and then trim close to your stitches. Now we're going to turn our hoop over and we're going to cut right in front of that knot. Next up, long tail method. This time we're going to come in through the back leaving a long tail behind and start stitching. Again, I'm showing back stitch. After you're done doing your stitches, you will pull your needle to the back and weave in your ends. Trim. Now we're going to take our long tail that we left in the beginning and we're going to re-thread it. And then we will weave it back into our beginning stitches. Trim and you're all set with very little mess left behind. And that's it, you're all ready to get started. In my next video, I'll be sharing my 10 beginner stitches. So stay tuned. And if you want more sewing and embroidery content, head on over to my blog, SewPomona.com and sign up for my newsletter. And if you'd like to see my embroidery designs, head over to my Etsy shop, Sew Pomona. Links are below in the description. Now I wanna turn it over to you. Are you new to embroidery? Is there anything you've struggled to understand that I can help you with? And if you've been embroidering for a while, do you have any tips you'd like to share? Please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching to the end. Happy sewing.